you sat on the bench for quite a while. I was watching you, just watching the flow of the game. What were you thinking about while this was going on? Yeah. Well, when it's that loud, like if you think standing up there and trying to say something, like they're actually going to hear you. It's like you're wasting, you're wasting your time, even though I've wasted my time before. Um, you know, just two totally different, you know, styles of play, right? Doesn't mean that we don't try to shoot threes, because we do. But, you know, just trying to, to use him as much as we can, because we think we have an advantage. Um, I think we have an advantage almost every game, if not every game. But, you know, just trying to be able to do that. The thing for us was trying to keep our morale up, because they made some tough shots, but we did positive things, and then we missed free throws. So, but you're doing good things. You're like, hey, what should we run here? Like, keep running what you're, you know, what you're doing. And we about scored 50 points in the first half. We would have came close to that if we could have made free throws in the second half, um, and it would have changed the game. But we didn't. But we, you know, and so for us, it was just trying to keep those guys positive, and keep playing, and uh, just taking the shots that you know. At times they would overdo it, and we'd get an open look, and um, we we just had to hang in there and stay with it. You know, very fortunate to win. You know, Boo Booey, you know, makes that seven, eight out of ten times on that floater. That's his, and that's his too. Like he's not taking a shot that you know he's average at right there. Like he's one of the best you know intermediate sh shooters in college basketball. Matt, you, you went zone briefly. Um, yes. You subbed in and out quite a bit, uh, defense for offense. Right. Did you kind of feel like you have to have matchups here throughout the course of the game to come out with a win against that team? Yeah, we just you know, had a handful of possessions where if he was going to ISO us, we were just going to load up. It, and once he passed it, we were going to go match and go back to man. Um, we had a breakdown on one, and they made a three. Another one, that I just thought they just made a tough shot. And then he missed a floater on the other one. So, um, you know, our attention to detail I didn't think was very good because their guard scored 71 points against us, three people before. So we have a high opinion of them. So it's not like our guys don't have respect for them or whatever, but you can't let Ty Berry come off things and get into a rhythm. You can't let, you know, Boo Booey do that. Now, some of the ones they made, especially Boo, like those are tough ones. Like you live with those. Like you just live with them. Like there's three or four of them that you just live with. You know, he's that good. But the other ones, like, you know, you're in between a switch, you're late on a switch, you get beat off the bounce, and now you're trying to recover. Like, we just had to do a better job, and we didn't. But with all that being said, give them credit. You know, they, they, they were really good and really efficient offensively. Matt, did uh, Braden play like one of the top ten point guards in the country? And what did, what did you think, about, especially right. in, in overtime? I think he had like four or five assists in the basket. Yeah. You know, he's fabulous. He's got great vision. He sees things. He sets guys up for threes. He understands what they're doing and what we're looking for. You know, we, we obviously want to look for Zach as much as we can. But then when they take that away, it opens up other things. But uh, I thought Braden had a fabulous game. You know, made some really nice uh, decisions in ball screens. We slipped out there a couple times in the overtime and were able to get a couple of those dunks. And uh, we didn't stay you know, as long in the ball screen. But no, Braden's, Braden's a really good player. And um, yeah, it's, you know, Bob Knight said that basketball is watched by millions and understood by few. So if you think that, you know, he's the 11th best point guard in the country, I hope you get a job in the Big Ten. <laughs> At least we'll get two wins. Matt, back here. Um, when Two and 18 would be great, right? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that guy's good. Uh, Matt, yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, Lance has obviously been playing good ball, 17 points in four of his last five games. Just what have you seen from him in the last couple of weeks? Oh. You know, he, he was so good down the stretch. You know, those threes, when they go up five or six, he was so good. Um, they had us right there. Like, they, you know, if they can get a stop and then another score, which they were scoring every time. Um, we were doing positive things. We just weren't making our free throws. So that was trying to like, don't get away from what we're doing. We, you know, we're going to make them. Um, but no, Lance is those two threes he made there. You know, he just gives us an, another element. He gives us that speed and quickness, um, competitiveness, very, very competitive. But uh, I thought he made some huge plays for us. Then he made his free throws down the stretch. I didn't realize he had 26 points. I'd have let him shoot those free throws to get 30. But Mason sacrificed so much for us. You know, he's a starter and. Um, comes off the bench for us. So I, I, I wanted to reward him. Matt, uh, <clears throat> over here. Uh, Thank it's, you. Every coach I've ever asked about free throws has some variation of, well, get in the gym and shoot more. But right. 
It's a big difference between shooting in the gym and pressure free throws right. that you had in the second half of this game. What, what, what kind of approach can you take to dealing with the pressure of free throws and, and yeah. key situations? Well, if that's it and, it and it's not, you know, mechanical, like you go and look at their mechanics and see Zebo lets the ball come off the side of his hand. So whenever he misses, he doesn't stay under it. So that's what I'm always talking to him about, like stay under it, stay under it. And that's where he normally misses in his free throws. You know, Trey just has to get in rhythm right there. I thought Trey did some really good things. But I can't have two guys out there that's splitting free throws or missing front ends of one and one. So he got stuck and, you know, we, we went back with Mason. But, um, you know, we do pressure free throws in practice, but, you know, it's not 14,000 people, right? And um, sometimes at home it's a little different because, you know, everybody tries to go quiet because they don't want to, you know, you kind of get used to that noise or you get used to whatever. But um, just go back in the lab and work on it. Like there's no, you know, when you shoot well or you shoot poorly, you still work on it. You know, that's what the great ones do. The great ones always work on what they're, they're doing. You have a good game and then, you know, you don't relax. You know, you, you keep working, you keep getting better. And so like, I, I never get too worried about it. Um, just because like, if you blow an assignment or you don't do what you're supposed to, like I got a problem with it. You know what I mean? We prepare, we talk, you're intelligent. You, you got to know what you're doing. But when a guy misses a free throw, no one's trying to miss a free throw. Like, I, I'm always positive with them. Like, unless they have something mechanical, you know, that they're making a mistake. Because now you get into the psychic if you talk to them about, you know, what they're doing. Like, Coach Lusk, one of our assistants, he works with Trey every day. Every day. So, like, I don't say anything to him, you know, because I don't go down there and, and talk to him while he shoots those all the time. Zach's been with us. He's got into it. And so, like, I... You know, I, I say something to him because I've always said something to him because when he first got here, he wasn't a good free throw shooter, and now he is. And I know this is a tough game, but he'll, he'll get it corrected. Three points, and he's able to dominate in you know, yeah. overtime despite being 7 4, 300 pounds. Right. Just how unique and just yeah. how great is he? Yeah, he's a special player. You know, he, he plays hard, he gives his best, and, um, you know, he doesn't pick his spots. A lot of times when you have guys that are that big, and carrying that much cargo, they'll pick their spots. It's hard for him. But he runs the court. He plays ball screen defense. He rebounds. He posts hard. You know, he, he gives it to you. You know, and so that's what he's kind of stoic. Like, you'll see him and you'll be like, ah, is he going to be ready? He's always ready. He doesn't always look ready, but he's always ready. He, he's a very competitive person. And, and so, like, now, like, you know, he sees the end of the rainbow, right? Like, he sees a, each day you know, the improvement and getting better. And sure, the accolades, you know, 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, they speak for themselves. There's nobody on that list that's a bad basketball player. Like, those are all great players. That's production, right? But, like, he just keeps going. And it's, um, you know, I feel bad, but I just don't like him out of the game, to be frank with you. That's the genius in me, right? I just, I just, I mean, it's like we should, we should have more depth there. I just don't like him out of the game. Like, he, like, you know who wants him out of the game? Yeah. That other team. That's who wants him. Is uh, the zone here to stay? Whew. I don't know. <laughs> if we have to play Boo Booey again, like, man, he is magical. And that dude's good. Like, Ty Berry, like, I went and saw Ty Berry in an open gym when he was a junior. I think he was in a junior, or whatever. Like, wow, like, those guys there, they're special, man. They're, they're good players, but it's a good system. They run good stuff. Like, they, they are. They're on top of it, and you and you see that with experience too. Like when everybody's connected, you know the connectivity there with their guys. You know Langborg being in his fourth year, Boo being in his fifth, Ty being in his fourth. Like those guys are all sharpshooters, good players, but they're intelligent and they're tough, and they make winning plays. Like I'm, I'm a big fan of Northwestern. I think they're a great team. After the first Northwestern game, did you feel like you had to do something different? A little 